iPhone 13. What is actually going on with it? We've seen so many reports that the iPhone 13 is going to get some massive changes such as a smaller notch or even dropping the charging port entirely, whilst some other reports are claiming that it would literally just be an iPhone 12s with minimal changes aside from some minor camera improvements. So which one is it? Well, this is why we're here to find out. So get us next ready and here are the latest leaks and rumors when it comes to the iPhone 13. Okay, so I've been making leaks videos since 2013. Yes, that's eight years ago. And even when I'm not actively talking about an upcoming device in the video, I do read a lot about him. And from what I've been reading on the iPhone 13, it looks to me that we would likely get these four big changes. With the first one being the lack of a charging port. So Ming Chikuo, one of the most well-known and also one of the most accurate Apple analysts, showed us in 2019 Apple's upcoming smartphone lineup for the next two years. His 2020 iPhone prediction showed us that there will be five models. A 5.4 inch model all the way up to a 6.7 inch model, all with OLED displays, as well as a brand new 4.7 inch LCD model. And not only that, but Ming-Chi Kuo also said that the two higher end models will have a triple lens camera module, while the two lower end models would come with a dual camera module with a 4.7 inch iPhone only having a single module. Well, all of these predictions came true when Apple launched their 2020 iPhone lineup. Like literally every single thing that Ming-Chi Kuo predicted in that 2019 report came true almost a year into the future. So. That's pretty impressive. So what has he said for 2021 then? Well, he said that Apple will be launching at least two unique iPhones this year. One being an iPhone SE2 Plus with a 5.5 or a 6.1 inch display, while the other one being an iPhone without the lightning ports. You know, a portless iPhone essentially. Now, do keep in mind that this report was from 2019, so Apple's plans are likely to have changed since. However, a more recent report from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman from just earlier this month claims that Apple is indeed discussing removing the charging ports in favor of full wireless charging. Now, fun fact, Mark Gurman has actually been way more accurate than even Ming Chi Kuo. In fact, according to the Apple Track website, Ming Chi Kuo has a 78.2% accuracy out of 142 rumors, while Mark Gurman has 89.1% but out of 402 rumors. And being in this industry for the past eight years myself, at least when it comes to reporting on leaks, I have to say Mark Gurman has definitely been one of the most accurate Apple leakers over the years. And if two of the most accurate Apple leakers are saying that Apple could potentially remove the charging port, there's a very high chance that they'll actually do it. Now, in terms of how I feel about that, I don't think the market is ready for such a switch yet. You see, MagSafe, which Apple introduced with the iPhone 12, was, in my opinion, a failure. And that's because it was twice as slow as Lightning, it was more inconvenient and more expensive than again just by using Lightning. So I think the advantages of MagSafe will be visible once more third-party manufacturers start introducing products such as car mounts, MagSafe charging stands, and many more. But until then, MagSafe is inferior to Lightning in every single way. So I think that for Apple to fully switch to MagSafe, they would need to first make MagSafe much faster than Lightning, and at a moment, it is twice as slow. But do let me know in the comments what do you guys think of a portless iPhone, and while you're at it, feel free to subscribe as well. Okay, now the second big feature that the iPhone 13 is said to come with is finally a high refresh rate display. And this is pretty self-explanatory. We've had high refresh rate displays on smartphones for actually the past four years now, and we're at a point in time where it is actually very difficult buying a new flagship or even a mid-range smartphone and not have a high refresh rate on that. In fact, most Xiaomi phones, even dirt cheap ones like the Poco X3 NFC, which retails for just about 200 pounds, um, phones like that, they actually do come with a 120Hz refresh rate display, whereas the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which costs almost six times as much, only comes with a 60Hz panel. I've talked about why in many previous videos, but long story short, for those who missed that, Apple sells in high volume and they just couldn't get enough display controllers for 120Hz. But that is set to finally be happening in 2021 with two of the models getting 120Hz, the two Pro models, alongside an LTPO display. A report coming from South Korean website The Alec essentially confirms just that. However, they did have a mixed track record in the past. 
but having an LDPO panel uh, could allow the iPhones to finally have an always-on display, you know, like Android phones have had for so many years now. Personally, I feel like 120Hz is a must on the next iPhone, they just wouldn't be able to get away with still having 60Hz in 2021. But I also hope that the battery isn't too affected as the iPhone 12 line did actually have a worse battery life than the iPhone 11 line as Apple made uh, the iPhones thinner and reduced the battery size as a result. Okay, Daniel from a different time here with an important announcement from our sponsor Surfshark. Surfshark offers you an 83% discount plus 3 months for free when using the coupon code Zone of Tech. What is Surfshark you might ask? Well, it is a VPN. But you see, unlike other VPNs, which can cost £10 a month or some even more than that, Surfshark only costs £1.71 a month. Yeah, that's actually less than a cup of coffee here in the UK. Also, unlike other VPNs, Surfshark lets you use it on an unlimited number of devices. And it's very easy and very fast to use. With literally one tap, you're automatically connected to the fastest possible network. And I was literally getting the same speeds I was getting when I wasn't using a VPN. And what does a VPN do, you might ask? Well, number one, it protects you from hackers that might scoop into your data when you're browsing from public Wi-Fi, such as at an airport, a hotel, and so on. Number two, it allows you to access Netflix and any other website and service for that matter from a different location. What this means is that I can watch Netflix US here in the UK and get access to TV shows that I normally would not have access to. And number three, it works on anything. iOS, Android, PC, Mac, Linux, Smart TVs, Amazon Fire Stick, Apple TV, Chrome, Firefox, Xbox, and PlayStation. Simply use the coupon code Zone of Tech to get an 83% discount plus three months for free. And thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Okay, now the third big change that's rumored to come to the iPhone 13 is a fingerprint reader. <laughs> yes, we've seen this reported a number of times over the years too. The fact that Apple is considering bringing back Touch ID into the iPhone. You might think that this is because of the whole pandemic, and in a lot of ways, it is. But we even had actual patents that showed Apple designing a full screen Touch ID sensor many, many years ago. So Apple has been thinking about this even before the pandemic hit. It's just that now, since a lot of us wear masks, they've aggressively been pushing for this to happen sooner. And they do actually have a more recent patent on this too. It got published in September 2020, and this one shows what is unfortunately not a full screen Touch ID sensor like the previous patents, but a fairly large optical fingerprint reader instead. The optical ones are the ones where the display would actually light up in that portion, uh, as there will be a camera underneath the panel which detects the fingerprint and just scans it. Now there are also ultrasonic fingerprint readers like Samsung has been using for quite a few years now, which don't require a light, but those ones are a bit slower than the optical ones. Ming Chikuo reported back in 2019 that Apple would be bringing back Touch ID in 2021 while still keeping Face ID. Mark Gurman also claims that Apple is working on adding Touch ID back into their iPhones in 2021, and he also says that Apple will keep Face ID so that users have both options rather than removing Face ID. And personally, I think that this is a great idea. I wouldn't want to get rid of Face ID either, as I do actually like how convenient it is, but in cases where you prefer to use your fingerprint or you have to use it because you wear a face covering, I do prefer having the option to do that. And finally, we have the camera. And here, Russ Young, who's been a, quite a well-known display analyst, he reports that the iPhone 13 mini and the iPhone 13 will both get the same camera sensor that the iPhone 12 Pro Max is using now. At the moment, the iPhone 12 mini, the iPhone 12, and the iPhone 12 Pro, they have sensors with 1.4 micron-sized pixels. The iPhone 12 Pro Max has a considerably larger sensor with 1.7 micron pixels. However, Ross Young also states that the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 13 Pro Max will take this even further with 1.9 micron pixels. With sensor shift technology, so essentially a stabilized sensor, which was what the iPhone 12 Pro Max introduced. That means that a 6.1 inch iPhone 13 Pro will be getting the biggest camera improvements from one generation to another, at least when it comes to the sensor itself. Now, Ross Young also claims that while the iPhone 13 Pros will still have three camera modules and a LiDAR module, 
he isn't too sure about the non-pro models. Digitimes released a report earlier in January stating that all iPhone 13 models will be getting a LiDAR module. And we already know that the main reason for Apple adding the LiDAR module is to take the data from it and improve their upcoming Apple AR glasses. Digitimes also reports that the ultra-wide angle module in all the iPhone 13 models will be upgraded to a 6-element lens with the Pro models possibly having even a higher resolution as well, that being on the main camera module. So yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of the camera. Bigger sensors, which would still be smaller than the competition unfortunately, and no crazy 10x optical zoom or anything like that, with Apple only said to be considering that for the 2022 iPhones. Okay, so then what about the design? Is that changing in any way? Well, from what we know so far, the display sizes will remain the same and the squared off frame will also remain unchanged. Meaning that any design changes that Apple could make would be on the back of the phone with most likely a brand new color. Samsung just introduced their new Phantom Black Galaxy S21 Ultra, which absolutely looks amazing, and I do hope that Apple introduces something like that with the iPhone 13. The notch, on the other hand, is said to finally be getting thinner, but this is what we heard before the iPhone 11 launched, and also before the iPhone 12 launched, and unfortunately they all remain the same. Now, Digitime states that Apple will combine a few components in order to make the entire notch smaller, but then again, this is what we've been hearing for so many years now, over and over and nothing really happened. However, Leaker Ice Universe, who's had a really good track record in the past, also claims that the notch will be getting smaller and uh, <laughs> he even drew a quick mock-up of how this might look like. So at the end of the day, I'm personally really looking forward to the iPhone 13, mostly for those camera improvements but I just wish that those improvements were bigger, as we now have smartphones with a gigantic sensor which can give you superb depth of field. Again, we have smartphones with 10x optical zoom, macro modes, and it just seems like even with those camera improvements that we're getting, or the ones that we're hoping to get based on the leaks, even those would be far behind uh, when compared to competition in terms of camera features. So. Yeah, let me know in the comments what do you guys think, are you excited for the iPhone 13 or do you think that this will be more of like a 12S release? If you have enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. It's enough tech, signing out. Cheers.